I tell you, this neighborhood is is just crazy. When I say that you don't even have to leave um, your home, you really don't because behind that tree, her name is Andrea. And uh, once again, little see little Mario? I don't know if you can see him over there. Little Mario's over there. And they were walking by. And guess who they wanted to say hi to? They wanted to say hi to Mario. And so I went down there and I started talking to her. And she told me that um, she was a believer. I don't know how we got on the subject, but obviously. And she said, you know, I haven't been a believer for long. They're going. Anyway, um, bye, dear. <laughs> and um, she said she had been living in sin. Get this. And that was the boy. That was a product of that. And she started feeling not good about it. And so she decided to break up with her boyfriend. That was a hard move. And uh, she just felt convicted. She just knew that it wasn't right. And you know, this was a young woman. And so she broke up. She said um, she left. And she said it was the worst two weeks of her life. So here she was at the park. And she was praying to the Lord. And she said, Lord, I don't know what to do. But my heart is broken. And um, I want to do what's right. And also she said she felt this overwhelming feeling that the man that she loved, even though she was living in sin, was going to leave. And she needed to go over there now. She said, get this. She said, I immediately drove over there and he was packing to go to Tennessee. And she said, he just so happened to be there with a brother in Christ. And she said, this was very hard because the brother in Christ said, you guys need to talk about this. And you need to be honest. She said it was the hardest conversation because we had to talk about what we were doing. And she said, you know, I was living in sin. It was very difficult to talk about that sin. And um, and she said, actually, the brother in Christ, she says, do you know the Mennonites? And I said, yeah, I've worked with a lot of Mennonites in Idaho. She says they were Mennonite. And they told us that we really needed to do what was right. And, you know, they loved each other. They had a son. And so she said... We decided to do what was right. You know, and, and I told her, I said, you know, this is the part. Sometimes, because and she said that was the hardest thing she ever had to do. And the reason why is because they didn't like each other for a long time. I guess they started having some problems. And she said it was very hard for me to to be married to him. We just had, we, had, we started having a lot of struggles. And that's what Satan does. You know, it's all good and dandy when you're not married, right? And then you get married and things start to fall apart but she said you know I just I love the Lord and we just kept working on it and I told her I said you know obedience sometimes even if it is difficult sometimes even if it hurts sometimes if you don't 100% believe obedience is so important you chose obedience first without even knowing the Lord uh, uh, you know, without having like a a, a good relation, a, a, an intimate relationship with that at that at that time, but you chose obedience, and I said, do you see how you you didn't even love your husband, but now how you love him, and how you, you love him because Jesus is now in your life, and and Jesus has now taught you what love is, and she says that's exactly what happened. She says it was me in my relationship with Christ, and she said now my husband's going to be. He was just asked to go preach at the church and she says it's amazing to see him dig into the the word of, of the Lord <laughs> it's not a that's not amazing it's just amazing wow I, I'm just and then um you know so and then I wanted to give her something because we were talking about the truth and uh, she's um Pentecostal yeah I think she's Pentecostal and and she recognized like when she was baptized she says I she's the one thing I, I I liked about the Pentecostals when they baptized me they baptized me in the name of Jesus not the Father Son and Holy Spirit and I said well you know then I told her a little bit about the Trinity and and some of the um, the impressions of all these religions and how tradition has changed a lot of things like you know we got Christmas and Easter and and then we've got this this three 
three thing trinity and i said you know there's a lot there's a lot there that that doesn't line up with god's word and she says oh yeah i know and i said you know what hang on let me let me get you something i want to give you a gift she said oh okay so i couldn't believe it the first book that the lord put in my hand when i opened the car door there was a great controversy in spanish and i looked at her i said do you read spanish she says absolutely i said i can't believe it <laughs> I, said, I can't believe it well here's your book i said this is for you because i don't know who i was going to give it to so i ended up giving her the great controversy in spanish and i gave her the minister of healing and you know towards the back of minister of healing is really beautiful because it talks about the home the child the mother and then the relationship with the husband and the wife. Each one is a separate chapter. And I said, you know, you really have an important job. You probably have one of the most important jobs in the world is being a mother. Because the salvation of your kids, when they're little, especially when they're little, depends so much on you to get them on the right track. And she knew that. And so, and then I gave her another a book about the con you know, consuming fire of hell. Um, so I said, you know, give it, meditate and give it a good read. So anyway... It's really funny because then at the end, um, she says, you know, so I said, uh, she said, well, there you go. She said, because um, I took a picture of her and she says, you know, it, it was interesting because you said, um, I heard you say that Mario's your Jesus dog. And she says, you know, I felt like I needed to come over here and pet your dog. So she said, she says, I think, she says, I think you're right. He is your Jesus dog because... This, this encounter wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for that dog. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus, for Mario. <laughs> and thank you for Andrea and her little boy, Daniel.